So hello, hello. we're live. <laughs> hello, Conleth Kane. Hi, Phil Marriott. <laughs> How are you? I've got my gin ready because we did have, um, well, we got booted when we were talking about two minutes ago. Hopefully this software won't boot us this time. So we are live, hopefully for, for the next hour or 45 minutes or however long this chat is. Uh, if you are new here, by the way, welcome to London Vegans. This is every Tuesday night we do a chat at eight o'clock and it is called London Vegans Live, chatting to influential vegans. Uh, Conleth is a very good friend of mine, a very successful singer-songwriter as well, who is now vegan. You've been vegan, what, is two years? Yeah, I um, did Veganuary in 2020. So I, I was working with, I was in a production in 2019 at Richmond Theatre. I was in the Christmas pantomime there. And quite a few people in my dressing room were vegan. And I was so impressed by their lunches and their energy and their skin and their it's every their aura everything about them and for the first time ever i thought i got food envy when i saw their lunches when we went out to dinner and um, and i thought you know something I, i'm going to do v either veganery or dry january and i couldn't really picture myself doing dry january so i went for veganery and and the rest is history. It's the best lifestyle choice I've ever made. I'm really, really, really chuffed that I've gone vegan. Well, that was going to be my next question. Has it lived up to what you're expecting? Because a lot of vegans, well, it's a short lived thing, but hopefully for a lot of people, they do realize that it's got, you know, a lot of positives for their life, mm. whether it's, you know, health or looking out, out for animal welfare. Because, you know, yeah. everyone's got, you know, different reasons for going vegan. I suppose with vegans, you know, animals is top of the list. There are people that eat plant-based or don't necessarily call themselves vegans. So I just think it's great that if everybody is doing it or more people are doing it, it can only be a, a good thing for the environment as well. So ha has Absolutely. it been a good thing for you for the last couple of years? Well, because I had... Um... I was vegan for about maybe two months before the whole COVID situation kicked in. So we were thrust into lockdown of, in March 2020. So I had a real fine opportunity to investigate cooking and really getting involved in because a lot of the time before lockdown and you know when when I wasn't trapped at home, I would do a lot of eating on the go, grabbing a sandwich, grabbing a soup, this, that, and the other. But when lockdown happened and I found myself confined to my home. I very much had an opportunity to really dig deep into finding new cooking skills and research new recipes. And I've, I genuinely, for the first time in my life, really enjoyed cooking. That's amazing. And yeah, so I, I very much, you know, I'm the, the kind of guy who, you know, runs to Pret and grabs a baguette or, you know, or, you know, forget, skips lunch. Cause I'm, I've, I've got a really busy schedule and, Sometimes I really should take 
better care of my eating. Um, but I have found that since becoming vegan, I enjoy my food a lot more. I enjoy researching recipes. I enjoy cooking. I love researching restaurants that have, you know, extensive vegan menus and food has become a lot more enjoyable. And of course, like you said, we're doing our bit for the planet. We're doing our bit for um, our animal friends. And just, you know, I, I do lots of yoga. I love my fitness and it just ties in well with my lifestyle and how I I live my life. It really, really suits me. I didn't think I was I would ever be able to maybe even go past a week, but I, I managed it and I haven't looked back since. That's amazing. I mean, you, you mentioned that you're cooking more now as well at home, but I mean, I've just been to the supermarket today and there's just so much choice now. I mean, I've been mm. vegan, well, it will be five years in January because I was like you, I went uh, vegan uh, throughout January for Veganuary. And it's just so much easier just to pick up like sausage rolls or salads or, you know, vegetable bowls or whatever, pre-packed mm-hmm. food. You know, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily want to eat, you know, convenience food all the time, but the options are there and that's, that's why it's the so The options great. are there, and she you know something, I was home recently in Northern Ireland, about three weeks ago, I popped home and my mum, dad and I went out to a pub in my local hometown in Northern Ireland. And they're a, a bit further behind when it comes to having, you know, multiple vegan options on a menu, etc. But this particular restaurant we went to did not have any vegan options. Uh, so I asked the waitress for advice. So she came out five minutes later and she said, oh, the chef's, the table's order is going to take a lot longer because he's really going to try and rustle up something special in the kitchen. And he sent out this incredible broccoli curry. I know it sounds, yeah, it's broccoli, chickpeas and and all these different Indian spices. And it was, my mum and dad had proper food envy. And (laughs) because he was put under pressure on the spot, all his creative skills came out. Now it's on the menu because I, it was so delicious. And I said to the management, you know, as a vegan, I thought that was incredible. You know, this option should be on the menu, the props to the chef for just, you know, moving on the spot and delivering for a a vegan and now it's on the menu because it it worked and that just goes to show you know the chef got put on the spot and he had to get creative and he just you know opened the cupboards in the kitchen and went for gold that's so great and it just reminds me of when i went to bali i think it was about four years ago and i had a vegan pizza and the the chef over there at the time hadn't done much vegan food. I mean, you think about okay. it now. I mean, four years ago, that's crazy because it's changed so much now. I, I guess, you know, people have been, you know, he's been inundated now. If, you know, if I went back now, it, there'd be loads of options. But there wasn't any. Exactly. There was like a well, couple I, of I, I, I think. I think when you go to the, those more rural areas, chefs and people who work in kitchens are on autopilot. You know, you, you know, maybe you know the, the, the tickets come through in the kitchen and they're making the same food all the time, and then all of a sudden, when you get a vegan at the table and that you know they have to you know put on their their thinking hats and get creative, he honestly produced an incredible meal, and my mom and dad were proper envious of my dinner that's so great that your parents are really envious as well this guy in bali by the way i should say what he made he made a pizza but it was not like a normal vegan pizza it was amazing it had, what was it when you uh, you get like lemon that's been um marinated i can't remember what it's called but you can Ooh, buy it in jars. and it had that it had like slices of lemon on the including the rind on the top and it had artichokes and it, you know a lot of vegetables Ooh, you wouldn't nice. normally have on a pizza unless you were adding that that extra sure. that, that separately but yeah it was it was amazing anyway nice. we're going to go on to more vegan stuff in a minute but first we should t- tell people about if they don't know you what what you do because obviously you're a singer songwriter you've you know been championing lgbt rights as well you're you know very vocal about that when it comes to visibility and you know the message of inclusion of equality um, can I just show this picture? Because this is actually it's a little bit of video footage of you at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern where I DJ in Vauxhall, South London. Okay. Uh, talk us through what's happening here. Wow. Oh, There's no sound, was, unfortunately. No, that was two days ago. So I filmed my upcoming uh, music video for my new single. Well, I say my new single. It's a song that I have 
released before, but it has been remixed by the incredible Seventh Heaven. Yeah. And um, we, I spent Sunday filming the video. So we started shooting at 10 in the morning and we went, we were still shooting at eight o'clock at night. So it was, we had three different locations and the third and final location was at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. I really wanted to capture that London iconic gay scene especially now that it's starting to reopen. And I, re I was really inspired by It's a Sin and that yeah, that whole era. And I really wanted to incorporate that kind of vision. It really matches the sound. Um, I wanted to have dancers involved. And so many people came up to me afterwards like, this needs to, this needs to be the Eurovision entry. And unfortunately, because I've released it as a song before and it's already in the public domain, it, it can't be submitted for Eurovision. But... It really, really suits that kind of genre. Uh, but I wrote the song initially back in 2017. Pride in London approached me, offered me a slot to perform. And it was three or four days before I was due to take to the stage. And I, at the time, equal marriage wasn't legal in Northern Ireland. And the, the DUP were very prominent in the press and LGBTQ plus rights in Northern Ireland were very very suppressed and there was a very there was a lot of press attention around it and I just remember feeling really frustrated as a gay man in London from Northern Ireland because in London I felt such liberty I felt such freedom I felt such acceptance but yet in my home country there was a real um a real level of homophobia going on within politics so I wrote proud in 10 minutes at my kitchen table and I thought oh I'm gonna I'm gonna trial this song at Pride in London so I got up on, st on stage at Pride in London and I told the audience that I wrote it you know two days before and that I might forget the words because I hardly knew the song and then when I sang the song and the reaction I got from it I thought whoa I need I need to do something with this so I did a version uh in the studio last year and released it but obviously the pandemic hit and all my promotional opportunities were absolutely smashed and i didn't get the opportunity to promote the song in the way that i felt it was deserved to be promoted so i was really really gutted by that like the majority of performers and artists because i put so much work into the creation of it and then to have my entire professional calendar dissolve and watch all the PR opportunities dismantle was really, really difficult. So then an opportunity came um, and I thought, no, let's let's take the song to yet another level. Let's make it a, like a pride anthem. So many people can identify with this song and you really don't have to be a member of the LGBTQ plus community to identify with this song. There's no lyric in the song that directs it to that community. And I thought, I'm going to take it to Seventh Heaven because they're my favorite remixers. I love a Seventh Heaven remix. And I sent them the original version and they got back to me within minutes. Um, and they emailed back saying, we, we would love to do this. So then when they sent me the finished version in a matter of days, I was going to release it last year in 2020. And then I thought, no, I'm going to hang on to this until there's some level of normality within society, until our cabaret scene and our club scene it looks like it might be reopened. And I want this to kind of mark a celebration. So here we are. This song is ready. It's out on the 16th of July. We filmed an epic music video with the Alpha Dancers, who are an LGBTQ plus dance group. And what I love about that particular dance group, you know, these are guys who are, you know, work in IT and they work in, so it's, they're not professional dancers. They just have a real love for getting together and having this community vibe and dancing for fun. I didn't want to be surrounded by dancers from Pineapple. I wanted to be surrounded by, you know, dancers who do it because they love it and it's they, what they want to meet and have that community vibe. And it's, it, it's, it's turned out so much better than I could have ever have hoped. So fingers crossed. Uh, but when I performed it at the RVT on Sunday, the reception was incredible. I know, it, looks, <laughs> it looks amazing. And I've got to say, it made me really jealous just watching this clip of you performing because I want to be back there so much because it's been a year and a half, I think, since I've DJed there. Well, I've DJed in like most places. I've had one gig 
which was about a month ago, um, which was outside. But that's that's the only gig that I've had for a, for a wow. year and a half. But yeah, I, I really want to get back there. But we, we we spoke about the frustration, you know, with lockdown and you obviously writing and performing and releasing music. And the, the downside of obviously releasing stuff in lockdown is that you don't get the... The promotional benefits i suppose but that that was when we met up i think that was maybe a year that's we right went to, uh, yeah that's a year ago in august was that by because we went to buy chloe didn't we down at uh by tower bridge mm-hmm. i can't remember <laughs> what we had there can you remember what we ate there Ooh. I can't <laughs> not as memorable I, 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 as your food tonight yeah <laughs> Should i, we have a look I, at I that? can't say i remember tell Ooh, us what you've been eating that's what i'm looking at right now <laughs> that's amazing so we've got falafel we've got uh... falafel we've got tomato and parsley we've got potato we've got hummus we've got aubergine and pomegranate we've got um garlic sauce which is garlic olive oil and lemon we've got some we've got some breads um we've got um some seasoning yeah it's great it's from a place called eat beirut in parsons green Excellent. Good recommendation. So, I mean, it's probably a good ch- a chance to talk about like food in general and what you eat in a day. I mean, because this is, um, you know, this episode of London Vegans Live, we've got a different topic every week. This week, it's the beginner's guide to going vegan. And of course, you've been vegan for two years. I thought, you know, what better person to talk about, you know, the switch, making that switch to cutting out dairy and meat. Because you, uh, did you eat meat before you went vegan? Because some people yeah, kind of wean I was, a bit, I was a big meat eater. I was yeah. a big meat eater. Although I did, I did cut out cow's milk in 2015. Uh, it was having a really negative effect on my skin. I used to have uh, really bad spots on my forehead and the top of my, so all this area had spots and I experimented. I cut X, Y, and Z out and that wasn't working. And then I thought, I actually, I drink a lot of tea, so therefore I have a lot of cow's milk. I have cereal every morning. That's a full bowl of cow's milk. Let's try and cut that out and see if that's if that's the culprit of my spot. <laughs> and it was. So the second I cut out the cow's milk, my skin completely cleared up. Wow, that's um, so wow. I have, I, Yeah, I haven't had cow's milk since about 2015. So I've, I went to plant milk back then, but I still had eggs, meat. Um, I still had cheese. Um, although I was never a huge cheese lover, um, like the thought of a, a cheese board with wine never excited me. Um, I wasn't that I wasn't that much into cheese, but I did love my meat. I loved chicken. I loved beef. I loved fish. Um, so I did. I had my last supper on the thirty first of January, twenty nineteen. I had macaroni cheese. I had ham. Um, and it was really quite funny because I went to a new year's eve party at a friend's house and i was staying over and so obviously we had the last supper which was fabulous but then when i woke up the next morning he was making a fry up for everyone and he was like oh i don't know what i'm gonna get you so i had a banana and a herbal tea <laughs> as, well, as everyone else was sat with their fry ups and i was really hungover so i thought so my first few hours of being vegan weren't pleasant at all because I just sat watching everyone eating their sausages and bacon and eggs. I was like, no, what am I doing? <laughs> That's really interesting though because you've um, you've obviously made that switch big time, like you uh, pretty much overnight. A lot of people would maybe g- g- gradually introduce it, but you you obviously don't miss it. I mean, you've seen the health benefits and you realise, you know, obviously mm. that you know. D- doing I find this the transition. Well. I did find the transition quite difficult because I still had like a week of shows at the theater um, after that. So you you know, like, I remember like everyone still had celebrations and roses and quality street because it was Christmas. So in the dress, you know, there's a few people in the dressing room and I used to love like when I came off stage in the interval, I'd make myself a cup of tea and have like three quality street, you know, it's Christmas and all that. And then I was like, <laughs> here I am, you know, minus the quality street. It was, it wasn't, um it wasn't particularly fun I, I remember my first few days being a challenge uh but then once you kind of get over that week it's it's fine yeah because i mean you're a really good person to ask because i've been a vegetarian or was a vegetarian before i went vegan since i was very young i think about seven or eight when i went vegetarian so it wasn't as difficult for me yeah. to give up the meat right. element or the fish element and you know, obviously that it was the, it was the cheese really i mean i didn't really eat many eggs before but 
Okay. Do, do you find that, because there's so much choice with meat, like vegan meats, you know, the alternatives. Do you use those? Do you think they're yes, a substitute? I do. Are they similar to meat to you? Um, no, I would say so. I think your taste buds adjust and I think that, you know, our sensations change. I definitely eat vegan alternatives now and I really enjoy them. I don't, whereas I think if I'd have tried them two years ago when I was still incorporating meat into my diet, I'd be like, no, that tastes like cardboard or that doesn't that doesn't taste like sausage at all. I'm not, eating. whereas now I, I really enjoy it. But I really thought I would struggle with not having eggs in my diet. And ironically, now I look at eggs and I'm like, oh, oh they make me feel sick. Yeah. So I, I was, eggs was my biggest worry about becoming vegan because I, I loved egg. Now eggs are the thing that make my stomach turn. How strange. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, how you change your opinion. I think when you do mm. go vegan, your your taste buds do change and you do kind of mm. wake up to how food is and especially how it's produced. So so what would you eat in a day? Just just tell me what you've maybe not today. Oh well, I suppose because you've you've had that takeaway, but you wouldn't mm, have that, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a real treat though, isn't it? When you have a takeaway, you realise how good it is. <laughs> I have pizza. Yeah, well, my, my ultimate my ultimate treat, like my takeaway my top favorite is the honest burger oh yeah uh, the, the the plant burger it's divine it's it's and the thing is my housemates are meat eaters and when they they now order the plant burger from honest burger because i've got them into it they they they, they yeah so they're meat eaters excuse me and they much prefer the plant burger from honest so that's my like that's my treat um but i love i know it sounds silly but in the morning i love nothing more than shreddies with root health almond milk okay uh, so good it's like oh i actually could i dive out of my bed throw my dress and go on and run to the kitchen i'm like can't wait for my shreddies and my root health almond milk see i, um, I find that shreddies don't fill me up they don't keep me going for long i just find that i get really hungry like half an hour after i've eaten yeah like, yeah porridge yeah. Usually, is fine if I'm going to like a yoga class, I will have a pulsing um, plant-based uh, protein bar. Yeah. They're, they're really good. They're really, um, I, I'm quite a, a I, I'm got, my, 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 my food intake isn't huge. I, I'm quite a short guy. I'm, I'm slim. So I, I don't eat huge amounts. So. Well, we can see um, you're slim. From this picture, let me just show you this. This is you doing yoga because yoga is another passion of yours. And I have to say, that body is supple. <laughs> Puts me to shame when I do yoga. I can't even stretch my legs, let alone bend <laughs> backwards like that. I mean, look at that. Your your chest and your spine are just... Cur you're very curvy and very bendy. Well, let's not forget, I you know, my, my background is theatre, so I went to dance, like, I went to musical theatre college for three years, so I did, like, jazz and ballet, yeah, you know, but... for maybe 12, 12 hours a week. But I have been doing Bikram Yoga yeah. since 2007. So can everybody who's Bikram in theatre and, and does ballet, can they bend like you can? Because that is, that is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to say, Bikram Yoga is um, my saving grace it, i've been practicing now for almost 13 years and it's my absolute go-to when i need to de-stress when i need to oh uh, it's it's i you know i practice on average maybe three to four classes a week and i have been so i really felt the absence of bikram yoga during lockdown you know when you go from doing it that that often to not having the the hot room and your fellow yogis around you on the mat and so lockdown, I find lockdown really hard. And you know, of course, losing all of my performances and my my professional performing work, that was really hard. But then to lose my yoga as well. So uh, it was it was awful. Yeah, I found that <laughs> yoga, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but when I do do yoga, it's more for the stretching as opposed to mm -hmm. all the fancy yeah. moves. Because I'm exhausted after a few of those moves. But when I do it, I feel amazing. It's like today I went swimming for the first time in, I don't know, two years, probably two and a half years. And I felt so good. I did 25 lengths. I was out of breath for the first five lengths. 
But after 25, I felt like I was flying. It was so weird. Yeah, yeah the endorphins okay. were flying. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, what we need to... We need to invest in our bodies. We need to look after our physical health and our mental health. And different things work for different people. And, you know, I know a lot of people who look at hot yoga and pick up yoga and they, they couldn't think of anything worse. But for me, it's the one thing that really, really works for me. And it's really, you know, increased my flexibility, my strength, my mental strength. Um, and I, I find it's a great pairing being a vegan and doing Bikram I, I that's one thing I will say so when I turned vegan we obviously went into lockdown so I wasn't really seeing the physical benefits of being a vegan because I wasn't really exercising as much as I would so now that I'm you know fully fledged vegan accompanied with my exercise routine I'm seeing a real change in my physical shape that's fantastic. That's really good because I, I think that's another positive, isn't it? It's like ticking all the boxes, like better for health, better for the animals, better for the planet, yeah. better for your fitness levels. I mean, you know, people do scoff at veganism, especially obviously the the hardcore meat meat eaters that will never or never seem to think about it or think about making the change. But you know, there, mm. there there's so many positives to come out of it. Absolutely. And uh, do you remember when Boris Johnson announced tier four mid-December and he gave us all like six hours notice to, you know, flee the city to get home for Christmas? Well, I was one of the people that managed to actually get out within that window. I, I ended up staying in Northern Ireland for three months of this year with my parents. So having to live in Northern Ireland with my parents who have no idea how to cook vegan meals or vegan dishes so it was really interesting to watch how someone from their era some nights and i you know made them become a little bit open-minded when it came to food and cooking and it was wonderful to watch my parents who are you know almost 70 in northern ireland who have a very specific diet it was really lovely for me to watch them being open-minded with vegan options whilst I was with them for that time period so and they enjoyed it and now my mum you know well she really she's really taken to the plant chef range of Tesco do you know what I'm I'm not kidding like it's seriously good I mean I have so much respect for Derek Sarno and what he's done with Wiki Kitchen obviously mm. plant chef that's like the cheapest cheaper end but I'm not saying that's worse because it's cheaper because I think some of the plant chef stuff is better than mm. any of the competitors. I seriously, mm. I mean, the sausages are my favorite vegan sausages. Yeah, sausages and their burgers are really good. Yeah, the burgers are great, and like they do a really good um, uh, vegan macaroni cheese. The plant Tesco plant chef, um, and obviously that you know, in we're quite limited to where we can shop back home where my mum and dad live. So Tesco was the and you know we're in lockdown. The only time you can really leave home is to go and get food. So when we went to Tesco, you know, I really was kind of, you know, limited to a certain brand or, but, you know, we, we really improvised. And my mom and dad have now, are now really open-minded. You know, like I said, when I went out for dinner with them two weeks ago, they said when they go back to the restaurant, they'll be ordering the curry that I had. So oh. you know, that's positive. It really is. And I think it's, it's just gradual steps for some people as well. It's like sinking in. Do you know what I mean? The message is sinking in. I think a lot of the problems that maybe people have with turning vegan is that they they really don't know how to do it or they're they're kind of stuck in the same routine or maybe they've people grown up. People are scared with... of change. Yeah. People, people are scared of change. And I suppose when you're growing up, your parents kind of have a big influence on you as well and people around you, you know, and if you're doing what they're doing and they're not vegan, then it's going to be even more difficult for you. I think it's just great to open your mind a bit and just maybe if it's not overnight, you know, for some people it is overnight. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't I don't think it necessarily has to be. I think that people just can make make a gradual change. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I want to experiment going vegan long before I did, but I myself was afraid of change. I was like, oh, it's going to be so much effort. I'm going to have to really think about this. I'm going to have to change every, you know, going out for dinner with friends will be more challenging. Um, I'm going to be that person at the table who has to, you know, have a special meal prepared. But actually, we're so lucky living in London that we have all this extra option and availability to us as as vegans. Um, 
I do find it a little bit difficult when I go home to Northern Ireland, but things are really starting to change and um, restaurants are, are starting to be a lot more open-minded when it comes to, you know, including their vegan customers. That's a really good point actually, because it is different for uh, different people, you know, depending on where you live. Because, you know, mm-hmm. we don't all have the luxuries of, of, of finding food everywhere. I mean, in London, you can pretty much find it everywhere. Oh, right? yeah. London, we're, we're, we're so we're so fortunate and we're spoiled for choice. But if you do go, you know, if I go back to my mum and dad who live in a very small town in the middle of nowhere in Northern Ireland, you know, I, it, it's hard to book a... It's hard to, and also what I've said to so many restaurants that I've visited, you could be losing a whole table of business because uh, if there's one vegan in the party and you don't have a vegan option on your menu, you lose an entire table. Exactly. So if there's one thing, I I mean, if you could give advice for people that aren't vegan yet, would you be able to suggest one thing? What's the most important thing in your experience? I it's really hard to pinpoint you know the obvious changes because I just feel like it's been a real gradual progression of of inner health outer health physical health mental health I feel just it's it's completed my kind of uh, well-being journey and you know I was very much like I said into my yoga I'm uh, so it really accompanied that element of my life particularly well um I, I would say you know that i was very fearful initially i i don't particularly warm to change um but i sometimes in life we really have to take ourselves out of our comfort zone and i always knew in the back of my mind i've been toying with the idea of playing with veganism since about 2016 and it took me until 2019 to actually you know do the leap um but i i genuinely wish i'd had a bit more courage and and gone sooner um and since then i haven't looked back and i genuinely can say hand in my heart that i will be a vegan for the rest of my life and i, th- I think i think vegans have had some bad press i think you know when you look at programs like good morning britain or this morning they obviously go for the controversial uh, yeah. you know, character who is quite forceful with their views and pushy with agendas and uh, and that can be quite harmful to the the vegan community because everyone assumes because you're vegan you think you know better than everyone else or or you know you think that everyone else's diet is rubbish that's not the case at all this is my choice i'm not forcing my opinion on you i'm happy to share my views with you and if you want to ask any questions i'm here to answer but i'm certainly not going to say that my diet is better than yours it's just different yeah and i suppose now more people are becoming vegan as well and it's becoming more popular and more mainstream that you know you don't need to feel so isolated and excluded because i think there are so many people that do give you support and i i just think i would say you know advice is just to reach out to people that you know who are vegan or have been vegan a long time go to forums message groups everything online i mean there's so much that you can you can get help from but going back to the brands thing because Oh yeah. One thing that we have got both got is this hoodie, and I've got to give. Oh a yeah, I love to... it. I love my vegan hoodie. Vegan usually, happy. Like... Vegan happy Stay clothing. Out. They're amazing. So yours is green, mine's black, and I'm actually yeah, I'm wearing it at the moment. So I've got the and Don't it's because it's Pride Month as well. This is the Pride. Yeah, I noticed a little flack. I don't think you can get them anymore. I think it's a real rarity. This. Oh, so was, that, was, got... that, was that a Pride special? It was a Pride special. And I, oh. I haven't seen them since. So I think we've okay. both got <laughs> we've both got rarities, special <laughs> special hoodies, which is great. So do, no, do you no, tend no, to look out for like clothing brands, vegan clothing brands? Since you've gone vegan, do, is that like a, an important part of your veganism to look out for? No, to, to, mm. to be conscious well, I will, of that. I was, uh, I'm a big Dr. Martens. Uh, I, I, I wear, I've got so many pairs of Dr. Martens. So going forward, I will definitely be going for the vegan option. I used to have loads. Um, Growing, like when I was younger, I used to always live in Dr. Martens. They, and they lasted years as well. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. They're, they're such a brilliant shoe. Um, but, I mean, I'm not that orthodox when it comes, like, you know, I've, I've been in experiences, I've had experiences where I've been with other vegans and, you know, I'm drinking a particular wine and they're like, oh, that's, that wine isn't vegan. I'm like, oh, you know, I, 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 I don't, 
I don't have a microscope over my food in terms of, of that. You know, I'm as far as I'm aware, I eat fruit and veg. I go for the plant based options. You know, if I buy a bottle of wine and it's not vegan, I don't, I don't I'm not going to give myself a hard time over it. Um, st- you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm not that kind of, you know, staunch vegan where everything has to be completely vegan. I'm, do- I'm doing my bit. You know, I, it's gradual, and I'm. And it is I'm, a I'm, plan. I mean, your your I'm main diet, like if you're eating vegan food, like twenty four hours a day, you know, mm. and you're concentrating on that. That is that is a big part of that. Um, but there are a few things in the news that I wanted to ask you about because I mean, especially the the vegan corn pizza. I don't know if you're a fan of pizzas. I am a fan of pizzas, as you could probably tell. Like putting on three stone over lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> but Pizza Express have just launched this vegan corn pizza, which Ooh. is a kind of rarity. And I go back to the rarity because vegan corn is quite hard to find because they do a lot of vegetarian corn, but not necessarily vegan corn. I mean, they're, they're starting to change now with the slices and everything. But is okay. that something you would try? Well, I went to Pizza Express was it late last year and they had a vegan version of their pandana pizza, which I which I got. So I did ask them for the vegan option, and that's what they they put forward. So I I got it. And apparently, if you are in London, I know you are, but everyone watching, um, celebrity chef Tom Kerridge, his brand new vegan brand, Bad Vegan, the concept is giving away hundreds of vegan lunches to celebrate. So free food on Thursday if you're in or anywhere near Buck Street Market between 12 and 2 p.m. on Thursday. Oh, nice. Get yourself down there. Uh, yes. Yeah, the monster potato tortilla. <gasps> oh, that sounds great. Potatoes, wheat, like carbs. Yes, I'm there. Well, I'm, I'm Irish, so yeah, I, lo- <laughs> I do love a potato. <laughs> and, and, you know, going back to brands, I do love, I, I, I adore Oatly, the barista version. Like, I'm such a, like, coffee, tea drinker. And, you know, if I go into a coffee shop and I see that they don't have Oatly, yeah. I'll quickly do a U-turn. <laughs> That that was my number one before. I mean, it still is now. I've still got it in the fridge. And I use it. I have try and have one coffee a day first thing. Okay, and it's always oh, with Oatly. I, I need I need to I need to better myself in that department. I'm I'm like, I maybe have like three cups of tea a day plus a coffee. Oh, I have more tea. I mean, I have one coffee, but I I have probably. Five oh, do you have a lot of tea? Of, okay. Yeah, I'm always going to the toilet. <laughs> Probably more oh, information yeah, I mean, than you need. <laughs> but no, have you seen that uh, Linda McCartney is now doing a barista? Uh, there's an oat ooh. one and a coconut one. And also Alpro, never been a massive fan of Alpro milks, but they're doing an Oatly, an Oatly style coffee uh, oat milk. And actually, it's the, is... it's, the, it's the oat milk barista version, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Have you tried it? You're not no. keen. No, you're no. you're an Oatly fan, so you're going to be loyal to Oatly. There's a, there is another brand. It's Blue. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it is a barista oat milk. It's really good. No, Oatly barista is just is the best. Uh, for, for me, I mean, yeah, Oatly, I mean, to be honest, they are the number ones, and I think a lot of brands are f- trying to follow, trying to compete with them because everybody relied on Oatly, and I think still do. But yeah. Yeah, they're kind of the original in that department. I love like my Pukka English breakfast tea with my Oatly. I'm a bit of a tea snob as well. Yeah, I know what you mean. I can't do Pukka, Pukka English breakfast tea is so good. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about your music because you mentioned your Seventh Heaven remix of uh, Proud, which is mm-hmm. coming out, did you say in a couple of weeks? july on the 16th on the july. 16th july. so the, the, this friday keep an eye on my socials because i'm revealing the artwork you know the the pre-order link um i'm working with uh, euro solution your friends to you know to help get the song out there yeah. uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to you know just kind of get, get put this song back out there and just you know mark it as a celebration and look at this as well. This was 59 weeks ago. You did a uh, NHS version of Proud as well mm, to support the NHS. I did. Well, do you know, so I was really quite um, apprehensive about doing that because Proud is such a personal song to me and I wrote it for a particular reason. But my one of my best friends, John, is a nurse and he came to me with all the sisters from his ward 
and they all said how much they loved Pride and, and would I consider reworking it for a uh, National Nurses Day. So I was put in a position of, oh, I don't know if I, A, if I can do that. I don't know if I can take a song that I wrote for a particular reason and transform it into another kind of version. And I didn't know if I wanted to touch the song either, but because of what the NHS were doing and I knew the kind of work pressure my friend John and his colleagues were under, I felt a little bit pressurized into kind of coming up with the goods. And I wasn't doing much else, to be honest with you. So um, I I give it a go. So I sat down and I, I rewrote the track. And, you know, and also you, I didn't want to, appear as jumping on the bandwagon of singing for the NHS. I was very conscious of that. And I was accused of that as well. And, you know, with people didn't know the backstory, I had no intention of ever doing it because my friend John supports me in all my ventures. And this was, you know, he comes, he comes to every single show I do. He's always in the front row. And this time it was him on, st on the world stage, you know, an, you know, a nurse in the front row of the pandemic doing his thing. So I couldn't say no. So I give it my best shot. And it actually turned out to be a really beautiful version. And I actually, um, I dedicated the proceeds. Any money that was made from that, I give straight to the Rainbow Project in Northern Ireland, which is a, an LGBTQ plus mental health charity. And so it wasn't anything I did for profit. I made sure all the money went straight in, back into the Rainbow Project. I did it because my friend John approached me and the nurses wanted that song and I, I did the best I could. I'm actually really proud of how it turned out, excuse the pun. Yeah, no, it's good yeah. because, I, I, again, it's another positive to come out of the lockdown experience because so many people have... I don't know, can not fine tune their brains, but almost like they've realised what's important to them and what's important to, to to people around them. And I think you've yeah, you 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 do you realise you know people that work you know on the front line, people that are, are doing jobs that are really difficult, especially at the moment and have been over the last couple of years. It's yeah, it's very important. I think yeah, absolutely. Anyway, it's so good to chat with you. I'm so grateful because you're busy eating and doing things like with your friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at my friend Melissa's house. And we're, yeah, Hi, Melissa. We're talking. She's, she's not a vegan and she's tucking into a... Melissa, are you in the room? Oh, she's, yeah. She's, yeah, so uh, she's uh, indulging a vegan meal on my on my behalf, so... Amazing. Has she had a vegan meal before? Is it first time? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I should, she, I've got her into the Honest Burger plant version. She's she's big into that. Excellent. Keep on doing that. Keep on feeding yeah. her vegan meals. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. We can only do so much. We can't force people to eat vegan food. Okay. <laughs> but it's so good to see you and catch up because no, it's been Phil. a while. Phil, thank you so much for all the support you offer me as a friend, as a singer-songwriter, as a fellow vegan. You know, you're so good and you do so much for the vegan community, for the LGBTQ plus community. It's, it's such a pleasure to do anything with you. I bless you, even though I'm really jealous of you because you've been at the RVT and I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hold it against you, it's fine. <laughs> no, so, I appreciate it. It's been fun. Thank you for coming on. Hopefully we can get you back on this. We're doing this every Tuesday, but we of course, Ooh. doing more stuff as well. Food hauls, food reviews, and we nice. must do another taste testing because you were like eating we, biscuits the last time we were yes. standing on some bridge somewhere in London. <laughs> Is it Westminster Bridge? <laughs> that's right oh my god that was mad that was back in october and that was the last time until recently that i've started doing more content for for this channel because okay. it's just been mad there's been so much happening i haven't really properly explained to everybody watching who follows us but yeah it's it's been intense there's been so many problems with our dog teddy he's had behavioral problems and oh, wow. lockdown it just changes your mood as well and i didn't want to be filming just for the sake of filming but yeah back on it now oh, I just want, I just want my life back. <laughs> I know, don't we all? <laughs> but it's slowly getting there. We're slowly yeah. getting there. But well, fingers crossed for the nineteenth. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. And fingers crossed for your remix. Yay! So, I need the, I need the clubs to open for it to work. Yes. So let's, let's let's get a move on. <laughs> well, I'm going to be playing it when I'm DJing again. Well, yes. That's a That's dead set. Like so where can people find you? We've just put up your Twitter. Hang on, let's try that again, see if that works. It probably won't work now, now I've said this. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 
So it's Conleth Kane yeah. at Twitter. Yes, Conleth Kane. Where Check else? Me. And it's Conleth Kane um, at Conleth Kane on Twitter, at Conleth Kane on Instagram, at Conleth Kane on Facebook. Oh, that's so easy. <laughs> not uh, like yeah, London like vegans. Uh, yeah, London I've, got, I've got the continuity going on. Yeah, that's so good because not everybody is called Conleth Kane. <laughs> Yeah, I get, be... I, get, I get I get a lot of variations, believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to know about mine. None of those positive. <laughs> I've had a few gins, as you can probably tell. I'm down to the bottom of my gin and tonic. Oh, I was nice. feeling stressed after my swim, and now I'm feeling quite rela- even more relaxed Dude. chatting to you and yeah. drinking gin. Gin and tonic, everyone. <laughs> so this is Melissa, who's tucking into the... Did you enjoy your vegan food, Melissa? It looked oh, amazing. Dear. I'm still enjoying it, actually, and the vegan wine that came with it. Yes. <laughs> is this one vegan? I don't know. I didn't no, no. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Phil. Ah, lots of love. Enjoy lots the rest of, of your night. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you next Tuesday. Thank you. I can't Bye-bye. say that. That's rude, isn't it? <laughs> See ya.